Welcome to Managing Role-Based Access Control on Azure. My name is Eric Leonard, and I'll be leading you through this course. I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP and an Azure content author at Cloud Academy. I have over 15 years of experience in IT. RBAC provides fine-grained access management to your resources in Azure. What this does is it allows you to segregate duties between different teams in your organization. As an example, one team could be tasked with managing VMs in a subscription, or someone could be tasked with cost management, or give your IT security team access to Azure Security Center. Making these RBAC examples work is by creating role assignments. Role assignments defines how you can access resources in Azure. This can be at the management group level and all the way down to the resource itself. A role assignment consists of three elements, the security principle, the role definition, and the scope you apply it to. A security principle can be a user, group, service principle, or managed identity that requires access to Azure resources. A role definition is a list of actions that you can or cannot do. Your role definition could allow you to create and manage virtual machines, but prevent you from deleting them. The following are the most common or known RBAC roles. Owner provides full access to resources in Azure, and you can delegate access to other users. Contributor, just like the owner role, provides full access to resources in Azure, but you cannot delegate control. As the name implies, the reader can only view resources in Azure. And lastly, the user access administrator role is granted permission to manage access to Azure resources. Beyond these fundamental roles, Azure provides many built-in roles to meet your organization needs. As an example, the security admin role provides access to Azure Security Center where they can read, edit security policies, and view and dismiss alerts. The last element is scope. In Azure, the RBAC roles can be assigned at different levels depending on how wide you want to provide the access. Scope can be applied at the management group level or at the subscription or at the resource group all the way down to individual resources. Combining these three elements makes the role assignments work by defining the role definition that will apply to a security principle and then is assigned to a scope. Role-based access control is how you can manage access to resources in Azure. As you navigate through Azure from the management group, subscription, resource group, all the way down to the individual resources, you will notice a blade called Access Control IAM. This is where you can view, add, and remove role assignments. The Azure Activity Log provides visibility into subscription level events that have occurred in Azure. Using the activity log, you can determine what operations were taken on the resources in your subscription. The activity log has eight categories. Administrative, this will contain all the records for create, update, delete, and actions per operations performed. Here we will see events related to RBAC like create role assignment and delete role assignment. Service health. Service health will contain any health related events that affect Azure. Resource health will contain the records of any resource health events that have occurred to your deployed resources in Azure. Alerts will contain all the alerts that were activated Auto scale will include the records related to auto scaling. Recommendations, this will have the recommendations from Azure Advisor. Security, which will contain all of the logs generated by Azure Security Center. And finally, policy. 
policy will contain records of all effect actions performed by Azure Policy. So, if you are ready to learn more about managing role-based access control, let's get started.